tell you about the lovely, lovely kingdom of Arashia. So in this kingdom, there's of course a king and a queen, because you know, it's a kingdom. Or dukedom, or whatever. Unfortunately, this king and queen only have one daughter, and her name is Lilith. So while Lilith is young, the kingdom flourishes. She, the kingdom itself, is famous for its exports of wine, cheese, and just all sorts of culinary delights. It's great. So as Lilith grows up, she becomes more and more just distempered. She's just moody and her likes her. But, you know, she's the only princess. Someone's got to marry her. So as she gets older, the not so fair maiden, and if truth be told, the rumors say she's not a maiden at all, someone has to marry her. She's got to get married. She has to have her. So her father, the king, I like the a long list of eligible We've got dukes, we've got kings, we've got czars, crown princes. Nah, she's not happy. She wants to go to the the king is had walks her away in the town. He figures a week, week and a half tops, she'll come to her senses. It's a month. She goes two months. And she's just getting nastier and nastier. So finally, he just, fine, have it. Live in the tower. Servants stop coming because she's really messy with them when they go up there. She's pretty much left for herself. So in the corner of this tower, she finds out. Dusty spellbook. Now you and I know not to read spellbooks aloud, not even as a joke, because horrible things happen. And she's of course been told this, but she's look, she's not going to listen to anyone. So she starts reading it. She starts gaining more and more powers. She catches a plant. Finally she calls her father the king and says, that's it. I've had it, I'll marry whoever. He's overjoyed. Big celebration, big feast. But she's got a plan. She sneaks down to the kitchen. She poisons the whole wedding feast. But, using her magic, she curses the whole kingdom. They can never taste again. Never. Including herself. I mean, you know, there's got to be a price to be paid. She goes down to the wedding feast. And she just feigns that she's upset. So she doesn't eat. Everyone eats, and they die. <laughs> Suddenly, she's the queen. She's queen for maybe 15 years. 15 years go by, the kingdom itself is just falling apart. I mean, they export food. You can't cook if you can't taste. The wines are horrible, the cheese is horrible, they don't even know where the food is from. Everyone's unhappy. She can taste. Doesn't know why. Has no idea. Her parents are actually the royal cooks for this wedding feast that killed everyone. Of course, someone had to take the fall, and it certainly wasn't going to be low. So they throw them in the dungeon, and then they die. But they left one thing to Greta, which is this serving spell. She uses it for everything. It's the only thing her parents love her. So the slowly word gets out that she can taste. And people come to her, cook for me, cook for me, please, I, I need to taste. And so she cooks for them, and they can taste lo and behold. Word gets to Lilith. She's incensed. Of course, everyone thinks she's incensed because she's just jealous, but of course she knows someone got around the curse. So Lilith calls Greta, demands an explanation. And Greta's like, I just, I don't know what to tell you, Her Majesty. I'm just a little cook. I just, I just cook. I'll do it for you. And maybe you can taste. So she's marched off to the royal kitchens. And she pulls out her trusty serving spoon. And the royal cook smacks it out of her head. What is wrong with you? You can't use this horrible, horrible spoon for the queen. She needs gold. She needs silver. 
use those. That's not fit. So Greta cooks, hoping this will allow the queen to taste, and she brings it to Lila. On bended knee, she's trembling and just waiting to see what Lila says. Of course, Lila can't taste anything. She flies into a rage, thinking she's been tricked, and demands an explanation. Greta says, Your Majesty, I don't know what it is. The only thing different was they didn't let me use my favorite spoon, but it's just a spoon. Lilith grabs the spoon, takes a bite of it, and lo and behold, Lilith can taste. So, as we all know, magic has consequences. You can't cast a curse without consequences, without a price. Unbeknownst to Lilith, part of her price was that if she were to ever taste again, she would instantly be struck down. So Lilith drops the door and dies on the spot. The curse is lifted and everyone is happy. Okay. So I had the antagonist of an evil sorceress, Lilith. Her weapon is magic. I had a protagonist of an orphan called Greta. Her weapon is a spoon. And the plot device is lifting a curse from the